Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. For the last few weeks, some of you guys have been requesting me to create a video on Minitab. How to use Minitab, what is Minitab? So in this video, I am going to teach you the basics of Minitab, how you can use Minitab for your basic project analysis. Some of the topics that we are going to discuss today are normality chart, run chart, process capability, gauge RNR attribute, hypothesis testing, there are so many types of hypothesis testing, we will try and cover the majority of them, Pareto chart, box plot and control charts. So let's begin. So whenever you open Minitab, this is the kind of window that will open up. The upper portion here is the session window in which the output will be displayed. And below you will see the Excel type of structure where you will put in data. There is this gray tab in which we will write down the heading of that data. And then the data will start from row number one onwards. So I have put in data in different worksheets and we will use them during our video. The first thing that we are going to learn is how to find out the normality of the continuous data. So in column C1 here, we have data of cycle time, which is continuous in nature. There are these different tabs at the top of the mini tab where it shows file, edit, data, CALC and stat, graph, view, help and assist. So majority of the times we will be using stat. For normality, we will go to stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. Under variables, we will enter cycle time and we will click OK. So in this graph, the p-value is greater than 0.05, which indicates that data is normally distributed. The next thing that we are going to learn here is about the run chart, which is checking the stability of the data. What does that mean? Uh, that means if the data has any special causes or not. So when the data has special causes, we will not be able to do analysis with that data. So the tool that will help us identify whether the data has special causes or not is run chart. For that, we will go to stat, quality tools and run chart. Under single column, we will enter cycle time. Under subgroup size, we will enter one and we click OK. Now the output is in the form of run chart that has been displayed here. So the value of clusters, mixtures, trend and oscillations should be greater than 0.05 to say that data is stable, which means we can work on or we can do analysis with this data. And this is how we create run chart in Minitab. The next thing that we are going to learn is process capability. In this case, our cycle time data is continuous and it is normally distributed. So how we can Calculate the process capability with Minitab. Stat, quality tools, capability analysis and normal. Under single column, we will enter cycle time. Under subgroup size, we will enter one. And the lower spec or the upper spec, it depends what your customer has given it to you. Suppose this is the cycle time of a call and customer says no call should be less than two minutes. So lower spec is two and no call should exceed 8 minutes. So the upper specification limit becomes 8. Now we go to options. Here you will select benchmark Z value. Click OK. And again OK. So in this case, the sigma value or Z bench value is 2.10, which is the Z bench value and which indicates that the process sigma is 2.10 sigma. This is the process capability. There are other parameters also, but we are not here to discuss or understand what is process capability. We are more here to understand how to do this activity in Minitab. So with this, we will move on to the next tool that we are going to learn in Minitab. The next tool that we are going to learn is attribute gauge RNR. So for that, I have data in column C1 to C5. So there are two operators and two trials that we have done for these two operators. And there is a standard also which is available for us. In gauge RNR, we check repeatability, reproducibility and accuracy of data. 
whether our operators are repeatable, reproducible and accurate comparing with the standard. So how to calculate gauge RNR in Minitab? We will go to stat, quality tools, attribute agreement analysis. We will click in multiple columns. Enter operator 1 trial 1, operator 1 trial 2 together. Then you enter operator 2 trial 1 and operator 2 trial 2. We have total number of appraisers as 2, total number of trials as 2. The known standard is also there so we select C5 here and we click OK. So the result is in the session window. All appraiser versus standard value is less than 90% which means our gauge has failed. But this is how you calculate attribute agreement analysis. Whenever you have attribute data in terms of true false, pass fail, you know, yes, no, you use attribute agreement analysis. And the minimum value to pass the gauge is 90%. And for more details, you can watch my video on gauge RNR. I'll attach the link in the description box below. But in today's video, we are only going to learn about how to do gauge RNR in Minitab. So the next thing that we are going to learn is how to create a Pareto chart in Minitab. With the help of Pareto, we can identify 20% contributors which are impacting 80% of the problem. And how to create a Pareto chart? So we will use column C7 and C8 here. We have different types of error and we have count of errors. For that we will go to stat, quality tools and Pareto chart. Under defects or attribute data we will select error type. And under frequencies we will select count of errors. And we will click OK. So this is how a Pareto chart is created. So if you look at this, 62.8% of the errors are contributed by error types D and E. It means if we work on these two error types, 62.8% of the problem will be resolved. Pareto chart is discrete data pictorial representation tool. So likewise we have box plot which is pictorial representation for continuous data. We have data in column C1 and C2. Cycle time is continuous data and city is discrete. So we want to see what is the contribution of the city on cycle time. So let us do that with the help of a box plot. And the path here is graph. Under graph you have box plot. So you have simple box plot, you have with groups box plot. So let us create with groups. Under graph variables you will enter cycle time. Under categorical variable we will enter city. And we will click OK. So this is a box plot. With the help of a box plot we can definitely see the median here. So median of Hyderabad is 3.05 and median of Delhi is 4.7. If it is a cycle time reduction project, so we definitely know that Hyderabad team is performing better than Delhi. And then we can implement what are the best practices from Hyderabad to Delhi. So box plot is pictorial representation of continuous data. To know more about box plot, we have separate video. I'll attach the link in the description box. All right. So the next thing that we are going to learn is hypothesis testing. So what we are going to learn in hypothesis testing is when your Y is continuous and normal and your, when your Y is continuous and non-normal and your X is discrete. So we are going to learn the last two tests. One is ANOVA and one is Moods Median. And we are also going to learn simple linear regression, how to do that in Minitab. And the last thing that we will learn is chi-square test, when your y is discrete and your x is also discrete. We will use chi-square test. So in this case, where columns C1 and C2 had data on cycle time and city. Cycle time is continuous data and city is discrete. So the test that we are going to use is one way ANOVA because my cycle time is normally distributed. And the path for ANOVA test is STAT ANOVA one way. In response, we will enter cycle time. 
and in factor we will enter city and we will click ok then we will look at this p value this p value is less than 0.05 it indicates that this x is a significant contributor to cycle time so city is a significant contributor to cycle time because its p value is less than 0.05 which is 0.000 so the detailed video i'll attach the link so that you can learn the application of anova also moving on to the next tool that we are going to learn is simple linear regression when your y is continuous and your x is also continuous we use simple linear regression so my cycle time is continuous y and my tenure of people working on the process is a continuous x so let us see when the tenure increases the cycle time decreases or not that's the hypothesis so for that we will go to stat regression and fitted line plot so we are going to use fitted line plot for simple linear regression in response y we will enter cycle time and in predictor we will enter tenure and we click okay if you look at this graph r square adjusted value is 91.9% which indicates that there is a strong correlation between y and x and whether it is a positive correlation or a negative correlation it is indicated by the slope of the line as tenure is increasing cycle time is decreasing so it is a negative correlation means whenever we have people spending more time in the process the time that they take to process a transaction goes down so this r square adjusted value should be greater than 65% to say that tenure is a contributing factor to cycle time which is greater than 65 so hence it is a significant x link of the detailed video will be attached in the description box for your reference moving on the next tool that we are going to learn is moods median test for that i have data of cycle time and city in column c1 and c2 in a different worksheet so this cycle time is non non normal so let me just show you stat basic statistics graphical summary under variables enter cycle time and click okay see the p value is less than 0.05 in this case hence this data is non normal when our y is non normal and x is discrete we will use moods median test and for that we will go to stat non parametric test moods median test under response we will enter cycle time under factors we will enter city and we will click okay p value of this test is less than 0.05 which indicates that city is a contributing factor the next tool that we are going to learn is chi square test when my y is discrete which is defect no defect in this case and when my x is discrete which is the associate here so we want to see whether shiva is making more errors than mohan or not let us see the comparison with the help of chi square test and for that we will go to stat tables chi square test for association under rows we will select column c1 under columns we will select column c2 and we click okay p value of less than 0.05 indicates that it is a significant x and now if you see here there is an expected value for mohan is 5.9 so mohan was expected 5.9 defects but he is creating 10 defects in overall process so mohan is the one we need to work on moving on to the last tool that we are going to learn which is control charts so the first control chart that we are going to learn is continuous control chart which is imr chart so i have in column c1 cycle time after improvement so we are going to create imr chart on cycle time after improvements stat control chart variable charts for individuals and imr chart under variables we will enter column c1 and we will click okay so this is the kind of control chart that we will get so no data point should cross the control limits otherwise there is a warning which comes and we have to look out for the special cause but there is no point which is going beyond the control limit so our cycle time is within control limits or we can say the process is in statistical control so this is how we create imr chart 
the link of the detailed video on control charts will be attached in the description box so you can watch and learn more about them but in minitab tutorial you should know how to create that in minitab the next control chart that we are going to learn is discrete control chart so when the data is defective and the sample size is varying in our case 200 units were checked in first instance and 12 defectives were there next instance we had 220 and 13 defectives were there out of 220 checked units so this is how we have the data for this kind of a data we create p chart it is a discrete control chart stat control charts attribute charts and p chart under variable we will enter defectives under subgroup size we will enter unit and we will click ok so this is p chart there is one point which is going beyond the control limits which is this point so which is sample number 16 the value is 0 0.1333 so you have to look at this data and see what is the problem why there are so many defects on a given day so that is how a p chart is created so friends minitab is so vast if we try and teach you the entire minitab it will take approximately seven days but what i have done in this uh, short video that i have given you the important tools that you should know for your green belt and black belt projects so i hope you like this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i'll see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye